What does it mean to have an early pregnancy loss? How is an early pregnancy loss diagnosed and how is it managed? Does it affect your future fertility? Here's everything you need to know about early pregnancy loss. Hey everyone, my name is Dr. Graham Dersna. In this video, I'm going to teach you about early pregnancy loss. Other terms that describe the same thing is a miscarriage, missed abortion, or spontaneous abortion. We'll cover how a loss is diagnosed, the three options for management, and at the end, what it means for your future. While you're watching, make sure to like, subscribe, and comment. Before we learn about early pregnancy loss, we need to know the natural progression of a normal pregnancy in the early weeks. First, an egg is released from the ovary into the fallopian tube. A sperm will then fuse with it to form an embryo, which then travels into the uterus and implants into the uterine wall. If this occurs, the pregnancy is called intrauterine. If the embryo implants in the tube or anywhere else, it's called an ectopic pregnancy, which will be covered in a future video. The first structure you can see on an ultrasound is called the gestational sac. This is the sac that the embryo grows in and it contains amniotic fluid. Next, the yolk sac becomes visible, which is a sac attached to the embryo. Finally, the embryo itself becomes visible, and when it's large enough, a heartbeat can be seen. Early pregnancy loss is defined as an intrauterine pregnancy with either an empty gestational sac or a gestational sac that has an embryo or fetus with no heart activity within the first 12 weeks and six days. These pregnancies are called non-viable and will not develop further. They are usually due to chromosomal abnormalities, which means the sperm and egg may have come together properly, but the combination of DNA was not correct. Either there was too much or too little, or there was a mistake in the DNA. The most common risk factors for early pregnancy loss include having previous early pregnancy losses and being older at the time of pregnancy. Symptoms of early pregnancy loss are very similar to normal and ectopic pregnancies, which can include pelvic cramping and vaginal bleeding. So if you experience one or both, you should contact your primary OBGYN to be evaluated. To safely diagnose an early pregnancy loss and not mistake it for a normal pregnancy, there are criteria that must be met. If you meet the criteria, your doctor will then discuss the options with you for how to move forward. If you feel like you want to wait and have another ultrasound and blood test to have peace of mind before discussing management, then let them know and schedule those appointments. The criteria include, if the gestational sac is more than 25 millimeters and no embryo is seen, if on the first ultrasound there is a normal sized gestational sac and no yolk sac, then two weeks later on an ultrasound an embryo with a heartbeat is still not seen, if on the first ultrasound there is a normal sized gestational sac and yolk sac, then 11 days later on another ultrasound, an embryo with a heartbeat is still not seen, or there is an embryo that is more than seven millimeters with no heartbeat. There are three options you can choose when you have an early pregnancy loss. All three options are safe and complications are very rare and each has their own risks and benefits. So unless you require immediate surgical management, you can choose the option that suits you best. Expectant management means you are choosing to wait and allow your body to release the pregnancy tissue on its own time. This can take several weeks and when it occurs, you will experience cramping and moderate to heavy vaginal bleeding. Too much bleeding would be if you're fully soaking two maxi pads in one hour up, down, left, right, the entire pad for two hours. So that's a total of four pads. The benefit to expectant management is that it happens on your own time and while you're at home. The risks are that if you have significant vaginal bleeding, you may have to go to the hospital and your body may not pass any or all of the tissue, which would require you to go to surgery to have the remaining tissue removed. Medical management is similar to expectant management, but you receive medication to help speed up the process. The medication is called mifepristone and mesoprostol. Mifepristone is one pill that you swallow, then mesoprostol is four pills that you either put against your cheek to dissolve 
or insert into the vagina to dissolve. You will still experience the cramping and bleeding, but it will occur within one to three days of taking the medication rather than waiting weeks. The same risks and benefits apply as expectant management with the added benefit that you know approximately when it will happen and can plan your schedule accordingly. The last option is surgery. This can either be done in the doctor's office or by going to the OR in the hospital. The benefit to surgery is that the pregnancy loss is managed immediately if you don't want to wait or if you don't want to experience the cramping, bleeding, and passing tissue at home. The risks include the same risks with all surgeries, which are rare, but can include the risk of anesthesia, bleeding, and surgical complications. Unfortunately, early pregnancy loss is very common. If you experience one, it is most likely due to chance. But if you experience two or more, your doctor may order follow-up tests to find out if there is another reason for the losses. Yes, you can attempt to become pregnant again immediately, although you may want to wait one to two weeks or one menstrual cycle to allow your body to heal and reduce the risk of infection. And if you don't want to become pregnant, then you can start contraception immediately after instead. Thanks for watching. Now hit that subscribe button and like the video. Then check out this other video to keep learning.